Chapter 19 Saving Ammo At the police station, Inspector Thomas Matthew sent for two Coca-Colas. With straws. A serval constable brought them on a plastic tray and offered them to the two muddy children sitting across the table from the inspector, their heads only a little higher than the mess of files and papers on it so once again, in the space of two weeks, bottled fear for Esther. Chilled. Fizzed. Sometimes things went worse with coke. The fizz went up his nose. He burped. Rahel giggled. She blew through her straw till the drink bubbled over onto her dress. All over the floor. Esther read aloud from the board on the wall. Senatilo P, he said. Senatilo P, Ekni Debo. It lay well, Iknegelit Nai, Rahel said. I set true OC. Ikni Safi. To his credit, Inspector Thomas Matthew remained calm. He sensed the growing incoherence in the children. He noted the dilated pupils. He had seen it all before, the human mind's escape valve. Its way of managing trauma. He made allowances for that. And couched his questions cleverly. Innocuously. Between when is your birthday, Mon? And what's your favorite color, Mole? Gradually, in a fractured, disjointed fashion, things began to fall into place. His men. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 147. Had briefed him about the pots and pans. The grass mat. The impossible to forget toys. They began to make sense now. Inspector Thomas Matthew was not amused. He sent a jeep for baby Kochama. He made sure that the children were not in the room when she arrived. He didn't greet her have a seat, he said. Baby Kochama sensed that something was terribly wrong. Have you found them? Is everything all right? Nothing is all right, the inspector assured her. From the look in his eyes and the tone of his voice, baby Kochama realized that she was dealing with a different person this time not the accommodating police officer of their previous meeting. She lowered herself into a chair. Inspector Thomas Matthew didn't mince his words. The Kotayam police had acted on the basis of an FIR filed by her. The paravan had been caught. Unfortunately he had been badly injured in the encounter, and in all. Likelihood would not live through the night. But now the children said that they had gone. Of their own volition. Their boat had capsized and the English child had drowned by accident which left the police saddled with the death in custody of a technically innocent man. True, he was a paravan. True, he had misbehaved. But these were troubled times and technically, as per the law, he was an innocent man. There was no case. Attempted rape? Baby Kochama suggested weakly. Where is the rape victim's complaint? Has it been filed? Has she made a statement? Have you brought it with you? The inspector's tone was belligerent. Almost hostile. Baby Kochama looked as though she had shrunk. Pouches of flesh hung from her eyes and jowls. Fear fermented in her, and the spit in her mouth turned sour. The inspector pushed a glass of water towards her. The matter is very simple. Either the rape victim must file a complaint, or the children must identify the paravan as their abductor in the presence of a police witness. Or he waited for Baby Kochama to look at him. Or I must charge you with lodging a false FIR criminal offense. Sweat stained baby Kochama's light blue blouse dark blue. Inspector Thomas Matthew didn't hustle her. He knew that given the political climate, he himself could be in very serious trouble. He was aware that Comrade K.N.M. Palai would not pass up this opportunity. He kicked himself for acting so impulsively. He used his printed hand towel to reach inside his shirt and wipe his chest and armpits. It was quiet in his office. The sounds of police station activity, the clumping of boots, the occasional howl of pain from somebody being interrogated, seemed distant as though they were coming from somewhere else. The children will do as they're told, baby Kochama said. If I could have a few moments alone with them. As you wish. The inspector rose to leave the office. Please give me five minutes before you send them in. Inspector Thomas Matthew nodded his assent and left. Baby Kochama wiped her shining, sweaty face. She stretched her neck, looking up. At the ceiling in order to wipe the sweat from crevices between her rolls of neck fat with the end of her palo. She kissed her crucifix. Hail Mary, full of grace. The words of the prayer deserted her. The door opened. Esther and Rahel were ushered in. Caked with mud. Drenched in Coca-Cola. The sight of baby Kochama made them suddenly sober. The moth with unusually dense dorsal tufts spread its wings over both their hearts. Why had she come? Where was Ammo? Was she still locked up? Baby Kochama looked at them sternly. She said nothing for a long time. When she spoke her voice was hoarse and unfamiliar. Whose boat was it? Where did you get it from? The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 148. Ours. That we found. Velutha mended it for us, Rahel whispered. 
How long have you had it? We found it the day Sophie Mole came. And you stole things from the house and took them across the river in it? We were only playing. Playing? Is that what you call it? Baby Kochama looked at them for a long time before she spoke again. Your lovely little cousin's body is lying in the drawing room. The fish have eaten out her eyes. Her mother can't stop crying. Is that what you call playing? A sudden breeze made the flowered window curtain billow. Outside Rahel could see jeeps parked. And walking people. A man was trying to start his motorcycle. Each time he jumped on the Kickstarter lever, his helmet slipped to one side. Inside the inspector's room, Papachi's moth was on the move. It's a terrible thing to take a person's life, baby Kochama said. It's the worst thing that anyone can ever do. Even God doesn't forgive that. You know that, don't you? Two heads nodded twice. And yet, she looked sadly at them, you did it. She looked them in the eye. You are murderers. She waited for this to sink in. You know that I know that it wasn't an accident. I know how jealous of her you were. And if the judge asks me in court I'll have to tell him, won't I? I can't tell a lie, can I? She patted the chair next to her here, come and sit down dash four cheeks of two obedient bottoms squeezed into it. I'll have to tell them how it was strictly against the rules for you to go alone to the river. How you forced her to go with you although you knew that she couldn't swim. How you pushed her out of the boat in the middle of the river. It wasn't an accident, was it? For saucers stared back at her. Fascinated by the story she was telling them. Then what happened? So now you'll have to go to jail, baby Kochama said kindly. And your mother will go to jail because of you. Would you like that? Frightened eyes and a fountain looked back at her. Three of you in three different jails. Do you know what jails in India are like? Two heads shook twice. Baby Kochama built up her case. She drew, from her imagination, vivid pictures of prison life. The cockroach crisp food. Fetchy chai piled in the toilets like soft brown mountains. The bedbugs. The beatings. She dwelled on the long years Amma would be put away because of them. How she would be an old, sick woman with lice in her hair when she came out, if she didn't die in jail, that was. Systematically, in her kind, concerned voice she conjured up the macabre future in store for them. When she had stamped our every ray of hope, destroyed their lives completely, like a fairy godmother she presented them with a solution. God would never forgive them for what they had done, but here on earth there was a way of undoing some of the damage. Of saving their mother from humiliation and suffering on their account. Provided they were prepared to be practical. Luckily, baby Kochama said, luckily for you, the police have made a mistake. A. Lucky mistake. She paused. You know what it is, don't you? There were people trapped in the glass paperweight on the policeman's desk. Estha could see them. A waltzing man and a waltzing woman. She wore a white dress with legs underneath. Don't you? There was paperweight waltz music. Mamachi was playing it on her violin. Arararararo rum param param. The thing is, baby Kochama's voice was saying, what's done s done. The inspector says he's going to die anyway. So it won't really matter to him what the police think. What matters is whether you want to go to jail, and make Amma go to jail because. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 149. Of you. It's up to you to decide that. There were bubbles inside the paperweight, which made the man and woman look as though they were waltzing underwater. They looked happy. Maybe they were getting married. She in her white dress. He in his black suit and bow tie. They were looking deep into each other's eyes. If you want to save her, all you have to do is to go with the uncle with the big mishas. He'll ask you a question. One question. All you have to do is to say yes. Then we can all go home. It's so easy. It's a small price to pay. Baby Kochama followed Estha's gaze. It was all she could do to prevent herself from taking the paperweight and flinging it out of the window. Her heart was hammering. So, she said, with a bright, brittle smile, the strain beginning to tell in her voice. What shall I tell the inspector, uncle? What have we decided? Do you want to save Arnmu, or shall we send her to jail? As though she was offering them a choice of two treats. Fishing or bathing the pigs. Bathing the pigs or fishing. Fishing. The twins looked up at her. Not together, but almost, two frightened voices whispered, save Amu. In the years to come they would replay this scene in their heads. As children. As teenagers. As adults. Had they been deceived into doing what they did? Had they been tricked into condemnation? In a way, yes. But it wasn't as simple as that. They both knew that they had been given a choice. And how quick they had been in the choosing. They hadn't given it more than a second of thought before they looked up and said, not together, but almost, save Amu. Save us. Save our mother. Baby Kochama beamed. 
Relief worked like a laxative. She needed to go to the bathroom. Urgently. She opened the door and asked for the inspector. They're good little children, she told him when he came. They'll go with you. No need for both. One will serve the purpose, Inspector Thomas Matthew said. Any. One. Mon. Mole. Who wants to come with me? Esther. Baby Kochama chose. Knowing him to be the more practical of the two. The more tractable. The more farsighted. The more responsible. You go. Good boy. Little man. He lived in a caravan. Dum dum. Esther went. Ambassador eat pelvis. With saucer eyes and a spoiled puff. A short ambassador flanked by tall policemen, on a terrible mission deep into the bowels of the Kotoyam police station. Their footsteps echoing on the flagstone floor. Rahel remained behind in the inspector's office and listened to the rude sounds of baby Kochama's relief dribbling down the sides of the inspector's pot in his attached toilet. The flush doesn't work, she said when she came out it's so annoying. Embarrassed that the inspector would see the color and consistency of her stool. The lockup was pitch dark. Esther could see nothing, but he could hear the sound of rasping, labored breathing. The smell of shit made him wretch. Someone switched on the light. Bright blinding. Velutha appeared on the scummy, slippery floor, a mangled genie invoked by a modern lamp. He was naked, his soiled munda had come undone. Blood spilled from his skull like a secret. His face was swollen and his head looked like a pumpkin, too large and heavy for the slender stem it grew from. A pumpkin with a monstrous upside-down smile. Police boots stepped back from the rim of a pool of urine spreading from him, the bright, bare electric bulb reflected in it. Dead fish floated up in Estha. One of the policemen prodded Velutha with his foot. There was no response. Inspector Thomas Matthew squatted on his haunches and raked his jeep key across the sole of Velutha's foot. Swollen eyes opened. Wandered. Then focused through a film of blood on a beloved child. Estha imagined hat something. In him smiled. Not his mouth, but some other unhurt part of him. His elbow perhaps. Or. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 150. Shoulder. The inspector asked his question. Estha's mouth said yes. Childhood tiptoed out. Silence slid in like a bolt. Someone switched off the light and Velutha disappeared. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Amu's reaction stunned her. The ground fell away from under her feet. She knew she had an ally in Inspector Thomas Matthew. But how long would that last? What if he was transferred and the case reopened? It was possible considering the shouting, sloga fleeting crowd of party workers that Comrade K. N. M. Palai had managed to assemble outside the gate. That prevented the laborers from coming to work and left vast quantities of mangoes, bananas, pineapple, garlic and ginger rotting slowly on the premises of Paradise Pickles. Baby Kochama knew she had to get Amu out of Imenum as soon as possible. She managed that by doing what she was best at. Irrigating her fields, nourishing her crops with other people's passions. She gnawed like a rat into the go-down of Chaco's grief. Within its walls she planted an easy, accessible target for his insane anger. It wasn't hard for her to portray Amu. As the person actually responsible for Sophie Mole's death. Amu and her two egg. Twins. Chaco breaking down doors was only the sad bull thrashing at the end of baby Kochama's leash. It was her idea that Amu be made to pack her bags and leave. That Esther be returned. Chapter 20